The 2019 Indianapolis 500 gained an unexpected but welcome addition to the entry list this week as USAC Sprint and Midget team Clawson Marshall Racing announced their intentions to enter car number 39 in this year's Indianapolis 500. It's Chevrolet powered and of course you may recognize the Clawson name. One of the owners of the team, Tim Clawson's son, Brian, raced at the 500 between the years of 2012 and 2016. Unfortunately, Brian lost his life in a, in a midget crash in 2016 and the partnership for the team or the sponsorship for the team of course is driven to save lives. Clawson himself was an organ donor and actually ended up saving lives uh, after his demise. The driver for this car and this entry has stirred up a little bit of controversy. It was announced that Pippa Mann will helm this entry and will try to get it in the Indianapolis 500. Now, it should also be mentioned that this team has a technical alliance with AJ Foyt Racing, both of which their cars were very fast last year, and in fact, Tony Kanaan was in contention to win until a flat tire. So Pippa Mann and this new team is a shoe in for the first bump, right? Wrong. Or at least not entirely accurate. I'm going to explain exactly why Pippa Man is not this shoe-in to get bumped that many people are pointing her out to be, despite the fact that yes, she was the slowest car that entered last year's Indianapolis 500 and really didn't have a shot to qualify for the race all month long. But that doesn't tell the entire story, and we're going to talk about this in this video. But before we talk positive and try to lift Pippa up a little bit, I do want to talk a little bit about something that's a little bit, I guess we'll say interesting. I know I overused that word, but this is really interesting exactly how all this came together and why Pippa ended up in this specific car with this specific sponsor. So you may remember that Driven to Save Lives was the primary sponsor of Stefan Wilson last year at Andretti Autosport. Wilson, of course, is also connected to the Driven to Save Lives campaign, as his brother Justin, who was unfortunately killed at Pocono in 2015, was also an organ donor and also helped save lives through organ donation. Because of that relationship with the Wilson family, they sponsored Stefan at the 2016 Indianapolis 500 with KV Racing. KV Racing folded at the end of 2016 and trying to get him a better ride, get him a better chance of winning the Indianapolis 500, Driven to Save Lives helped sponsor him and Andretti Autosport for the 2017 race. Unfortunately, there was a big old guy named Fred Nando Lonzo who showed up and decided, hey, I would like to race for Andretti Autosport. So a convoluted plan was put in place that would move the money that Stefan had spent on his 2017 ride and would move it into the next year for 2018, still with the same team, Andretti Autosport. So on the bench, Stefan watched as Fernando Alonso took his car to the lead and eventually out of the race with an engine failure. And then in 2018, Wilson pretty easily qualified for the race in car number 25, driven to save lives. And at the end of the race would actually be in contention for a victory. Even though it was on fuel mileage, no doubt about it, he could have possibly won the race if there had been a yellow flag before he had to make his final pit stop. But driven to save lives, or at least the company that owns it, was not the only, or at least Stefan was not the only car that was sponsored by that company in last year's Indianapolis 500. They also sponsored Pippa Man through their Donate Life campaign. Of course, Pippa Man did not make the show, and many people will kind of question why uh, Stefan Wilson was brushed over for Pippa Man. Now, here's one more interesting little factoid about. Pippa Man and Stefan Wilson and Driven to Save Lives. In 2016, of course, Stefan Wilson drove for KV Racing. KV Racing, of course, folded at the end of that year. Stefan Wilson's car was sold, the one he raced in the Indianapolis 500, was sold at the end of that year to AJ Foyt Racing. That year in the Indianapolis 500, it raced with Zach Veach as a third entry from the AJ Foyt stable. The next year, it was leased out to uh, Bellardi Autosport along with Jonathan Bird and Hollinger Racing. That was driven by James Davison. And it's my understanding that the car that Pippa Man will be using this year with Driven to Save Lives sponsorship will be the same chassis that carried Stefan Wilson in his rookie Indianapolis 500. Just a little bit of factoids and fun. I, I love chassis history, so I just kind of had to slip that in there. 
But I think there is a legitimate point that I'm trying to make here that I think I, th I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility to make the assumption that the sponsor, Driven to Save Lives, had the majority say in who was piloting the car. So where was the decision made to put Pippa in this car over Stefan Wilson? Or was that a decision in the first place? It almost certainly had to have been. They had two drivers in last year's race, uh, and they chose the driver who finished 35th and didn't even make the big show over a driver who was about five laps and a yellow flag away from winning uh, the greatest spectacle in racing. I don't know. That That's an interesting discussion to be had. I just figured I'd bring that up and kind of bring up the intertwined history of Pippa Man and Stefan Wilson and this particular sponsorship. I think it's also good, by the way, that uh, the Claussons are back involved at Indianapolis. And it's also good for the short track guys that there is a USAC team that has moved up to the big time. I think that should be celebrated. And quite honestly, it's kind of the Buddy Lazier argument. I, I, it was weird when I had to defend why Buddy Lazier would show up at the Indy 500. Um, if he's got his own car and he figured out how to get there, who are you sitting on your couch watching a guy on YouTube talk about this stuff? Who are you to judge uh, what, what Buddy Lazier does and does not do with his money? Same thing here with Pippa Mann, I think, and the Clawson Marshall Racing Team. I think they had a, a sponsor that was willing to work with them and work with a driver who was bringing the funding to their team. And, and you know, they're going to be on the Indy 500 entry list. And I, I would wager that there are very few of you watching this video right now who have a car entered in this year's Indianapolis 500. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Let's defend Pippa Mann, shall we? Because I don't think a lot of people are going to do it. And I'm going to do it. So there have been four years since 2014, or 2011, sorry, that have had bumping. Uh, so more than 33 cars. You had to actually qualify for the Indianapolis 500. You didn't just have to go out there and put in a time. Each of those years, Pippa Man has qualified, or at least attempted to qualify for the race. Three out of the four years, she qualified when she actually had to bump her way into the field. The first year was her rookie year, 2011. She qualified 32nd overall. She was the 32nd fastest car, and she outqualified seven other drivers. 2013, she qualified in 30th position, and there was one car bumped from the field. So 34 out of 34, she was 30th. 2015, another year where only one car was bumped. She qualified 28th position that year. And then, of course, last year, and there's been some debate about exactly what her speed was, but by everything I've looked at, she was actually 35th. Hinchcliffe actually did set a four-lap uh, lap speed that was quicker than Pippa at one point, but I believe they withdrew the time. So it's kind of weird how the Indy 500 qualifying works. She may have been 34th or she may have been 35th. It, it, that's kind of semantics because ultimately she was bumped from the field. But in terms of when it's the pressure has been on, Pippa has performed 75% of the time. That being said, there looks like it's going to be about a 38 car entry in this year's Indianapolis 500. So add five to each of those counts when we're starting to talk about whether or not she will be able to make the race. So let's assume for the sake of this argument that each of those five cars are faster than Pippa in, in the one car effort with the Foyt engineering. So 2011, I don't think we have to add any cars to that entry because there will be five cars bumped this year. It's looking like. There were seven cars bumped in 2011. So she easily made the field that year. So that's one year, 2011, she would have made it. 2013, she qualified 30th. Five cars, she would have qualified, what, 33rd, or, uh, 35th, 36th, somewhere around there. So she would have missed the show in 2013, assuming there were 38 cars that showed up. 2015, she actually would have made it. Adding five cars to the field would have put her in 33rd position. Yes, it's last on the grid, but... Last on the grid is still in the show, and that's better than what happened to her in 2018 when she missed the show. So even going up to a 38-car grid or a 38-car entry list, what we're looking at, Pippa Man essentially has a 50-50 shot of getting in the Indianapolis 500. And I think that is a fair assessment of where everything is going to go. Again, it's so early to be throwing cars and drivers completely out it, it, that's that's asking for trouble because there's a potential that you could have a Penske situation where you have a three or a four car team where everybody misses the setup and all the cars get bumped or most of the cars get bumped. Then you've got, 
you know, let's let's talk. I don't want to throw these guys under the bus, but you look at guys like Ben Hanley, brand new team, brand new driver. At least Pippa has experience here. They are going to struggle. You look at Carlin Racing. What's going to happen there? I, I mentioned the possibility that Fernando may not be able to get that team up to speed. What happens there? Uh, you could talk about, the again, the possibility of Schmidt being slow again. There's so many different variables that could go into something like this that you can't put it you can't be solid about anybody because there's nobody locked in any of the 35 drivers and teams could go home or 38 drivers and teams could go home so that that's a big deal but i think the most important bit to look at and think about is the car i mentioned the car earlier it's the old stefan wilson car it qualified in 2017 despite not having to actually qualify because you know, there was no possibility of it being bumped. But last year, the car got in the race in the hands of James Davison. On the first day of qualifying, which is bump day, which counts, remember, Indy 500 qualifying is dumb. And at some point, I'm going to actually talk about the qualifying procedure and how bad it is right now because it doesn't make any sense for actual bumping. Regardless, the first day of time trials is bump day. So the cars that don't make it into the top 33, they get knocked out. Davison was 33rd. Bumped his way in, but he was dead, stone dead last at the end of the first day of qualifying. He qualified at a speed of 224.7, 33rd fastest. When he re-qualified the next day, he qualified 19th with a speed of 226.255, and he actually had a fast lap at nearly 228 miles an hour. So that car that Pippa is going to try to qualify for this race does have some speed. It does have some potential, and again, we remember A.J. Foyt and A.J. Foyt Racing was quick in last year's Indianapolis 500. Let's assume she can drive Tony Kanaan's setup. They strap it on, maybe add a little bit of extra downforce just to make Pippa as comfortable as possible. Let's say Kanaan goes out there and runs 229. She turns a 227. I think a 227 is a safe speed. So there you go. I think I think people th immediately taking this team and tossing it are barking up the wrong tree. Would the team be in better shape if they had Stefan Wilson? Probably, but they would probably be in better shape if they had Fernando Alonso. They don't. So we're talking about the realistic situation here. Pippa Man is not an absolute 100% lock-in bump. Nobody is. And that's the beauty of the Indianapolis 500 and why it's so special. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more motorsports, IndyCar, and Indy 500 content, and we'll see you in the next video.